This is Stay Paid, the marketing podcast that gives listeners a competitive edge to stay motivated, find inspiration, and discover proven real-world tactics from some of the best marketers across the nation. Welcome to another Silver Dollar episode of Stay Paid. My name is Joshua Stike. And I'm Luke Acree. And today we're going to talk about this idea of, I guess, I know you mentioned legacy, but also this idea of what type of game are we playing in here in in life? Are we playing this idea of an infinite game or is it a finite game? And kind of some recent experiences that you had that sort of triggered this sort of thinking. So we we, we said we have no bullet points. We're just going to riff and kind of talk about this idea. I say crack open the beer, but we're on 75 hearts. You can't have a beer. I have my core power. Milk, strawberry, banana, protein milk. Yeah, you know, trying to get my protein in. How are you doing on the seventy-five heart? By the way, I'm keep keeping up. Keeping it up. I'm keeping up with uh, the exercises. I've kind of, to be honest, I've dropped uh, some of the stuff that, like, I'm so not, you're no longer seventy-five heart. Nah, I'm not. I'm not seventy-five heart. I'm doing the exercises. I'm doing the diet. I'm doing the no drinking. Like, I'm doing all of those things, but I'm not doing. You're not doing the reading. Yeah, it's or like a gallon of water. It's kind of like I got. I hate to say it this way, but I kind of got what I got out of it, like what I wanted to get out of it, which I think is good. I think this what plays you, into what this did whole What you idea. want to get out of it? I wanted to get onto an exercise program. I wanted oh, to start okay, getting yep. in shape. I've got yep. a run that I'm doing in June, so I needed something So in other words, ladies and gentlemen, he quits, and he never told me he quit. <laughs> what a freaking bomb. I told you I failed. <laughs> you told me you failed, but you told me you were starting again. Guys, well, this is Well, we haven't done a podcast since then. <laughs> This is drama on the podcast. I wonder how many other people in our chat group have actually quit and not said anything yet. I admit it to the chat group yeah, that I failed. you are the only honest person. Uh, we're 33 days in right at this are, point. Are, are you? Well, okay. I think so. I think, no, maybe today's the 34th day. Um, and it is tough. It, it yeah. is like I told Megan I've hit a wall of like, oh, wow, most of the diet things I do are challenges. I do our 30-day challenges, and it's a lot different yeah. than the 75-day it challenge. It really did. I mean, I'm not, not making excuses. I re- It really did. I got what I wanted out of it, and I kind of came at pieces. Like, all right, I don't really – my goal wasn't to see if I could you're, do 75 hard. You're my goal too was much to of just, a, like a realist or, or a person who's like – you're not going to do something just to do it. You right. you need that, like, what, like Megan's that way, too. She's like, you're just an idiot. No, if I would have went into this challenging myself to finish it, I would have a different mentality. I went yeah. into this saying, I need something extreme that's just going to get my butt in gear so I can lose some weight and, yeah. and get running. <laughs> now, I mean, it's definitely, I, I feel like, uh, you know, at the end of it, I hopefully will be in the best shape of my life. But anyways. It's kind of how I to, can't do, I mean, not to be tangential, yeah. but that's what it is. Kind of like the intermittent fasting, like, isn't enough for me. I need a very strict diet because yeah. it's the only way I diet. Because you, um, like, for me, I'm doing intermittent fasting, and I told Megan, I said, I have to control how big I make the meal at the end of the day because yeah. I find myself eating more because I'm like, I'm so hungry and <laughs> I can't be able eat. to eat for 18 yeah, hours. <laughs> exactly. So, but anyway, so speaking of 75 hard, this whole thing came out of this topic of the infinite game and finite game. As Simon Sinek has an amazing book, amazing talks. So you can YouTube this and Google it, but really is a game changer when you think uh, about it perspective wise. But I went to Barcelona and I, uh, the hardest thing about going to Barcelona was keeping the 75 hard because they're known for sangria. Dude, you, you were can't not drink playing alcohol. around, man. Dude, you had to do the time changes. It was it sucked. It was terrible. When but you got back, what, what time did you get home? You, you, or you did I your got outdoor home exercise? at um, like 7, 30, 8 o'clock, but I had to drive back from JFK in New York. And so I get home and it's later and I have to do an outside workout. But I at least was intelligent enough to know when I woke up in Barcelona, I have to go to the gym before the airport because my flight was early. Mm-hmm. So I mm-hmm. woke up super early, did a exercise in the gym, and then that's hardcore, man. It was crazy. But when I went to Barcelona, the thing that stood out to me, besides it's an amazing city, my first time um, over there, you know, want to go back. It was incredible. But, you know, there's so many people in this world. I'm, I'm one of those probably strange people. Or maybe everybody's like this. You go to like a, a new city, a new place, and you just realize, oh, my goodness, look at all these people. With their own lives With their, and their own yeah, worlds. Own dreams, own problems, own ambitions. And you and I started, I was walking the streets of Barcelona trying to look for a present for Megan and Evie. And as I was walking through these packed streets and just shops and stuff like that, I'm just, I'm like, wow. I sometimes don't do things because I'm literally worried about how it's going to be received, perceived, what the impact and consequence is going to be of what people think about it. And I think to myself, holy crap, it doesn't matter at all. Like, you look at all these people. I have no idea what's going on in these people's life, and they could post whatever they want on the internet. They could do whatever they want. It doesn't matter at all. And it got me really thinking and kind of reflecting on the flight home of like, man, 
how many times do we let the opinions and the thoughts of what other people are going to think about what you did or what you're doing dictate your decisions? And it's all the time. Cr- oh, all the time. And it's crazy to think that. Think about the latest scandals. The latest scandals going on in the headlines what right are on the, the news. Scandals? What are? I mean, I don't even know what they are. I, I guess turned, Trump's in the news. I again. turned off the boot tube a long time ago, man. I was just like, turn that TV yep. off. That's yep. terrible. But the news and everything like that. But think about the scandal before that. I can't even remember it. Like even the big scandals, mm-hmm. you don't even remember. And so, and we're so nervous to do things because of that stuff. And then that led me to this thought of, you know, Alex Hermosi has been posting a lot about it recently. Yeah. But it's this thought of like. Think four generations from now. Mm -hmm. Will they even remember you? Will they even remember Tom Brady? Like I was listening to a podcast today in the gym, right? And we talk about legacy all the time, right? And like, is Kobe Bryant even going to be remembered a hundred years from now? Yeah. Yeah. You think he is the one podcast guy today in the gym said he's not going to be in one other podcast guy was like, no, no, no. He's going to be remembered. Yeah. But Kobe Bryant. Like, is he really going to be remembered? Do you remember the basketball players from, or because you I mean, like look at basketball? Babe Ruth. I mean, 100 years, right? Babe Ruth played 100 years ago, and we remember him. Yeah. And that was before the internet and before everything was documented in video. But, but and, I think it's going to be even worse. I mean, 100 the inter- years internet, is, There's going to be almost too many influencers. Probably three or four generations. Three or four generations. Three generations yeah. My belief is you might be remembered, but it will have no impact on anybody's life. Yes. Or, or it will be a small – like e- Babe Ruth, I'm sure, has had some impact on some baseball player's life today, but because it's in that person's niche. But the overall well, concept you, It is one, of, one, one in a million that will have that type of – and maybe even greater Hudson yeah, that will have that type of lasting, lasting legacy, yeah. But, but like if you think about the ones that actually have lasting, lasting legacies, the only things that transcend probably time is probably – more religion, philosophy, theology, mm-hmm. things that are greater outside of yourself, that type of idea. But anyways, this whole concept, not to get lost, yeah. Josh and I are going to have a philosophy <laughs> podcast one day, but not to get lost in that. But the point basically making is that Alex, or Alex, <laughs> Simon Sinek, not Alex Ramosi, Simon Sinek talks about this concept called the finite game and the infinite game. Okay, And he says the biggest mistake people make in business is they don't understand the game they're playing. And and when you fundamentally don't understand the game you're playing, you actually can't win the game and you can't and you mess up and you actually do things wrong, quote unquote. And the concept here is that a finite game is the game we tend to most think we're playing. And, and you relate to that thinking of like baseball. Yeah. You know baseball is a finite game because there's a an outcome. Yeah. yeah. How's an outcome? There's rules to the game that you follow that dictate who yeah. won or who lost. Nine innings, who, whoever has the most scores at the end wins. But a, an infinite game is a game that's never ending. So the concept is business is an infinite game. Okay. And if you don't understand that you're playing in an infinite game, you're not understanding actually what you're trying to do. And it's actually going to hurt you as a business because business existed before your business existed mm-hmm. and your business or business, the concept of business is going to exist after your business is gone. Mm-hmm. And he says, what most people make the mistake of is they set out and they try to play these finite games with inside this infinite game. And it, it, and it gets all convoluted where a perfect example would be like, I want to be number one in market. I want to be the number one marketing company in the world. Yeah. Right. But for how long? Right. For like, what does that actually gain you to be like, and who said you're the number one marketing? What dictates that? Is well, it the amount a, of revenue you have? Is it the amount of clients you have? It's Is a it goal. the amount of products I mean, you, that you do? You have to shoot towards a goal. So, so, but uh, Simon Sinek's whole point is that we make every decision based upon creating in a finite game. But in the end, that's actually what hurts you because if you focus just on the finite and you don't focus on the infinite, then you don't have the patience to actually build your company. It's a very interesting and will concept. It, right. No, I totally get it from the, almost from the standpoint of if you're so focused on making the decisions that will get you to the number one marketing company in the world at, at by a certain point, what else are you giving up or what else are you Correct. not doing that could get you there over time or could be more fulfilling or could hit a goal that you actually you actually want more than being number one, but because you're so focused on number one, you're doing certain things, not doing other things that maybe lose sight yeah. of the overall picture. And, and the whole point of kind of thinking about this, right? The challenge that I got from, you know, just the reflecting on this was going, what decisions am I making today 
that are being dictated by the opinions of what I want other people to think about me. Mm -hmm. And that are really this finite game that doesn't really matter. So I E Oh, I want to be a hundred million dollar company and I have to be a hundred million dollar company. But if I'm a hundred million dollar company making less money than I was making at $75 million, oh, right. like what am I even doing <laughs> right. all for the, for the pride of going, Oh, I crossed the hundred million mark and the amount of entrepreneurs and business people that can do it is so small. Yeah. And, and, it's, it's really hard because these conversations or these things are nuanced because you can make an argument and on both sides. this conversation in and of itself is sort of infinite, meaning there's no like final decision or conclusion where you'll walk out of and go, oh, no, this is now what I want to do. It's yeah. like, this is, I mean, people, we're, we're, we evolve, we, we, we change our minds, we think yeah. through things. Yeah. Well, he talks about like the greatest companies understand they're playing an infinite game. Mm. So... Like he uses an example in, in his talks that it's basically like when he went and spoke at Microsoft, all of the Microsoft people, all of their talks revolved around, he went to their executive retreat offsite or whatever. They all revolved around beating Apple. Mm. And he said the, the stark difference was when he went in to Apple mm. and he shared with Apple that Microsoft gave him a product that was far superior than any, it was like a music player product or something at the time that was far superior to Apple's. Um, the Apple executive was like, I bet it, I bet it is. I bet it is. And, the, and he was driving home the point that Apple, the reason for their success is they, they aren't focused on beating anybody. They're focused on the infinite game of, we want to keep creating the very best products. We want to think differently. That now, concept, that's the funny whole enough, theory. And that sounds great. I, and I'm sure that that's Steve true. And that's Jobs, a good story. You know, passed away. And now Tim Cook's driven it, driven it into the gun. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, when Steve Jobs came back to Apple, his mission was to beat Microsoft. Yeah, like that was, he would do talks on it. And they would, they, I was very, very focused on becoming a bigger, we should get Simon Sinek on and go, Hey, what do you think about that? But that's, but I think that is another example of the infinite game that, you know, your goals can change and you can shift. Sometimes you might need Correct. that shorter term goal that you can lock on to, yep. but at some point you do shift the thing. And I'm sure that Steve Jobs didn't have those same thoughts later in his life and in his career. I'm sure his thought process changed. Well, we're going to do in a, terms of what he's what hopefully he an episode on the five regrets of the dying and then the seven lessons from people who are, are dying. Cause um, is I've that been from reading, the book? It's for, there's a book about it, which is really interesting. And then there's a bunch of kind of articles out there that you can read, but there's a lot of interesting takeaways, but it plays into this whole concept of the infinite game mm -hmm. and what really matters. And, and we had a, a TikTok go viral millions of views. And the TikTok was all about, Hey, if you're, I'm in my thirties right now, if you're in your twenties and you're not where you want to be, that's okay. Okay. Yeah. You, some days you're going to be thinking, hey, you're going to have to grind it out and you're going to be feeling lonely. And some days you're going to be on top of the world with your friends and you're exactly where you need to be. Yeah. That is the concept that if you feel like you are constantly, oh my goodness, I'm not where I'm supposed to be. I'm not accomplishing this goal or whatever it is. It's like realize, you know, business life, it's, it's this infinite game. Now in life, you obviously have an ending, but in business and what you're building, you have to have patience. It's one of the keys to business. And there's not like, to me, I want to be like Jeff Bezos, Bezos and think 10 years ahead. Mm. Right now, I'm barely thinking a couple quarters <laughs> ahead. If that, I mean, maybe I'm thinking a year, if I'm being honest with myself, but he's thinking 10 years ahead. It's like, how many decisions do you make today that five years from now you'll be reaping the benefits? Yeah. And it's like, most of the time we don't make those decisions because we play in the finite in, in theory, like I go, oh, it's this year in 2023, I got to beat these revenue targets and goals are good, but we tend to make our goals off of the opinions of what other people are thinking or th things that don't really add up to building something that's really successful. I need to do more studying. Like I need to study more. I don't know if you have Jeff Bezos process when you say he's thinking of planning 10 years yeah. ahead. Like I need to see like, what's the practical application of that? Maybe we can even yeah. do an episode. Or well, think about this. That I don't know when this is coming out, right? Yeah. But we're recording it like on the 3rd of April or something like that. Literally right after the first quarter. Yeah. And the quarter's gone in a blink. <sighs> In a blink. And we have an IT roadmap and we have all this stuff. And I think to myself, my gosh, Luke, you're not, you're thinking in weeks mm -hmm. when you're, we're programming things with IT and you're doing sales strategies and you're doing, you're thinking in weeks and a quarter comes and goes in an instance. You need to be thinking like, Hey, time is going to pass. You're not going to, it's not going to be the end of the world. If it takes you six months to get a project out, if that's the right project, mm -hmm. focus on the longer term, not the shorter term. 
All right, the bigger picture. We won't share this with our yeah, yeah. IT team. Probably. <laughs> no, yeah. Right. Yeah, I hope they don't listen to the podcast now. <laughs> no, that was awesome. Thank you so much for listening. You can head on over to staypaidpodcast.com for the show notes and the video of this episode. If you uh, like this episode and want to support the show, two ways we ask you to do it. First is head on over to Apple Podcasts, drop us a five-star review along with a rating and we will, uh, or along with a comment, we'll read it here on the show. And the best way to show your support is to share this episode with a friend. Please let us know what you think. Make sure to go over to YouTube, uh, drop your comments in there in terms of this idea of are you living in the infinite are you living in a finite game kind of where your where your space is and what your take on it as well uh i don't know speaking of the news i don't know if you saw the news the other day but there was this uh story that came out these two robbers were uh robbing uh a liquor store right so the one robber they had footage held up uh a bottle and asked the other robber uh is this whiskey and the the other robber said uh not as whiskey as robbing a bank (laughs) oh my you got the real you got the live clown there. there. Yeah. That was good. Well done. <laughs> if you want to get a hold of me or Luke, you can email us at podcast at remindermedia.com or you can find us on Instagram. We are at Stay Paid Podcast. And like Luke mentioned, you can find us on TikTok as well. We're at Stay Paid underscore podcast there. For this episode of Stay Paid, I'm Joshua Stike. Guys, I'm Luke Acre, and I need some whiskey. I'm drifting in the infinite right now. No, <laughs> it's, the, it's the 75 hard. No, seriously, my action item for all of you right now is to think to yourself, you know, the tangible is two, I think, things. One is, Are you making decisions and dictating the journey and the direction of your life and your business based upon the opinions of others? Mm. Or is it really based upon what you're trying to achieve? And stop worrying about what people think because most of the time, unless you're Babe Ruth, people won't remember you (laughs) a generation from now. Not to be funny. But then the second thing I think that's really, really tangible is do you have the right amount of patience in your business? And are you thinking big enough? Are you thinking infinitely? You're not thinking in a finite mentality. You're thinking in a business that you want to last 100 years. One of the most powerful things that Josh and I changed in our business is every all staff meeting, we were talking about a hundred million dollar company and we shifted it to going, we want to be a company that lasts a hundred years. Like the whole thought process was we got to shift the mentality in our organization to think bigger, to think and and be, have more patience, to think more long-term, to think past our existence here at this organization. And that helps us actually dictate what we do and why we do it. Remember the difference between top producers and mediocre producers in every single business is top producers take action. Take action on that today. 